Hey, Jim Bergman with MeasureQuick. We had a few questions on how to use the duct leakage feature of the MeasureQuick application, so I wanted to review that a little today. I've got a unit set up here. It's a little Goodman ton and a half system, and I've got a little flex duct system tied to it. And basically, what we did up here is on the return side, I have a duct that's run across from this other uh, heat pump and tied into the uh, return air boot. So if you look across here, you see you've got a return air duct and it ties into this heat pump here. And what I'm going to do is turn the heat pump on and introduce some heat into the ductwork. And that heat going into the ductwork is going to simulate a return air leak. So there's a couple things I want to show you here. What makes return air leakage really hard to diagnose is, first of all, I've got, I've got a, a, a temperature probe on this side of the duct and another one on this side of the duct. So I can get a mixed, uh, basically return air one and return air two. Now remember, when you looked at that, at the uh, hot air coming in, it's on, the, it's on this side of the duct, on the left-hand side of the duct. And if we look at it right now, you notice that uh, through the thermal imaging camera here, and the reason we had to put the tape on here is because this is really reflective. So you can see my hand and then you can see my reflection of my, myself standing in there. So you need to get the emissivity closer to one and, and we've put the tape on here so we can get a good temperature. So you can see it's about 80 degrees all the way across that tape. It's a very uniform in color. Right now, a couple other things I did here. I showed you I got the two return air sensors down here. I put in two mixed air sensors in the filter in the filter rack. So I've got slide this one out. In fact, I'll just grab this one. I'll put it right into the filter rack here. And all I'm doing is just sensing uh, air temperature on the left and right hand side of the filter just to get a, a nice even mixed air temperature on there. So we got those two. And then the other probe I've got here is a static pressure probe, a testo probe here in the bottom that's measuring static pressure in the return. So in the application, what I want to do here is show you, first of all, that if we look at those two return air probes, one's at 81.5 and one's at 42% 40, relative humidity and 80.2 and 44, so pretty close. And the mixed air, the two mixed air at 79 and 44 and 80 and 42. And then our attic air, which is that probe up there, is at 76.3 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat pump on here. So turn this to heat and turn it to 78 degrees. It's going to take a second to start here. And once it gets running, I'll show you uh, what's happening on the, re on the uh, return air side. All right, so you can see now I've had this running only for just a couple seconds here. And I want you to notice a couple things. Our mixed air sensors now are one to 84 and one to 81. And then our attic air is at 106 degrees. And our two return airs, we're at 81 on this side of the duct and we're at 88.7 on this side of the duct. So the moral of the story here is that if you're measuring return air in a single location, right, it seems like it would lie to you and, and it is. If we look at the, th take the thermal imaging camera now and look at this duct work, you can actually see the gradient that you can see that half the duct is hot and the other half the duct is cool, right? So you can see there's quite a dr dramatic, I'll back up just a little bit here, you can see there's quite a dramatic difference on there. And the reason because, the reason this happens is, is air is very laminar in a duct. So when we have a, a leak on this side of the duct, all that hot air is gonna go down. It's literally gonna go down this side of the duct. If you're measuring over on this side of the duct, you're never gonna see that return air leak, right? So one solution obviously is to use multiple probes and that gets expensive if you, but it's, it's definitely a, a good solution. But I want to show you something here also is that we have a test in here for duct leakage. So in the upper right, upper left hand corner is a little house. And then under quick test, you can select duct leakage screening. And you'll see down here that we have a return air, uh, a mixed air, mixed air two. And what I'm going to do here is actually I'm going to go in and I'm going to delete one of my return air probes because the return air probe that is at 81, uh, that's at, at 91 degrees, I've just put in there temporarily so you guys could see that. And I'm just gonna map it back to outdoor air. What I put it in there for was to, to show the, the two temperature difference between them, but what that was doing was averaging the two temperatures. So now I'm gonna go back in here. We'll go back into the uh, duct leakage screening and you're gonna see that we have about a 12% loss in our duct work right now a 12% capacity loss, and 7% of that's due to duct leakage. So return air dry bulb is 81, the mixed air temperature is 87.9, mixed air two is 82. 
And again, even clear down at the bottom where those are at in the filter, after they go through the filter, even though the air comes down and sort of crashes in the bottom, they still have quite a bit of difference, six degree difference between them. And our attic air up here is only 112 degrees, which is not that hot uh, for a typical, typical attic, right? Return air static at 0.25 and estimated airflow at 600 CFM. So you can see that we, could, we can use MeasureQuick and a couple of probes to pretty quickly estimate how much capacity loss and what our estimated uh, duct leakage is on this. Down at the bottom here, um, we can have also put in our length of a run. So this length is 10 feet and we're at rectangular duct and our duct is 20 by eight. And if we were to take in, put in our R value, like we had R8 duct, then it would show you, oops, I'll go back to duct leakage screening here. Must have bumped it, this miss. Okay, we'll just put that back in there, rectangular ducts, 20 by eight. It'll show you then the capacity loss for the estimated duct leakage. If I change the insulation value, you'll see that changing with the, uh, so we calculate basically in the, in the app, we, we look at the insulation value, the length of the run, the outside perimeter of the run, and then we normalize it to 25 pascals like you would on a, on a duct tester. So it does all those calculations for you. Now let's talk a little bit how MeasureQuick could find that. And let me go ahead and turn on a couple other probes here. So, which I'm gonna have to grab. So give me just a minute, I'll get set up and I'll show you how MeasureQuick could pick up the duct leakage. All right, so let's talk a little bit about now, you know, I just did the duct leakage screening, but let's talk a little bit about now how MeasureQuick just picks this up in general, right? So again, I've got a return air probe here. And one of the things I always suggest to you guys whenever you're, whenever you're doing your work, you know, the, obviously this is not a return duct, but you would go upstairs and look at your thermostat. If the thermostat's 75 here and you're reading 80 degrees coming down your return, pretty good indication you might have some duct leakage issues to, to, to identify. But here, all I've got running right now is I've got a return air probe, I've got a supply air probe, I've got a suction line and a liquid line probe down here on MeasureQuick and a stove return air static. And if we take a look at the application here, and it's, um, and we just scroll through the results here, you're gonna notice that my, my superheat looks okay. It's a little bit on the high side. Liquid line temperature's a little low. My indoor uh, return air wet bulb and dry bulb are in the 82 degree range. Well, my, my, dry, my supplier is going in and out, and that's, most likely do the duct leakage. I'll hit the flag here so you can see this. So we've got two things showing up. Suction line temperature is too high and a potential uh, duct leakage in there. And it's just going in between there because we don't have that much air leaking into the attic, but I got enough that we can pick it up. And if you look at the faults in here, what it's picking up basically is that we have a, um, a, a our sensible heat is too low on the machine. So let me go back here for just a minute. And we'll look at our BTUs. Our capacity is running on the low side on the machine. It's picking up the uh, pressures that are out of range and basically picking up different faults in here that are telling us that there's a potential return air leak. So you don't have to have any fancy probes or anything extra to, to, for MeasureQuick to pick this up, but it will pick up these kind of problems and then you can go through and actually use the probes and that test to actually figure out how much uh, impact your return air leakage is having on it. Now, just to show you this, because it's just interesting here, you can see we're at about 13,000 BTUs of cooling and uh, I'm a ton and a half system, so uh, I'm still keeping up okay, but let me go ahead and I'm gonna kill this heat pump. We'll just turn that off. And as soon as that heat pump shuts off, we'll start to see our, our capacity start to come back up. And then that problem will clear out on there. So heat pump just shut off. You, I don't know if you can hear it in the background there, but it just shut off. We'll let this run for just a second. So we're at 13,350, 13,310. Let it go here sensible wise, 13,332, 11. Let it go for just a second here. And we'll probably start seeing things come up here. It's just gonna take a minute because it went unstable. So what happens, this is just an interesting uh, conundrum with measure quick is, the airflow here is actually higher than it than 600 CFM per ton. When the system goes unstable, what MeasureQuick does is it drops it back to nominal airflow because it's saying, hey, we really can't do an estimated airflow calculation because things aren't stable yet. So it's gonna take a few minutes to stabilize. Now it's going back towards stable. You can see we're coming up around 14, 175, 13, 347, and things will start to come into, into range here. Let me go back here and see what our suction line temp looks like. We're at a 71 degree suction line, which is on the high side. And again, it's because 
we're moving a lot of load here. We have a high uh, return air temperature and a high uh, return air, high return air temp and just a high temperature in the shop in general right now. So those two combined are kicking that suction line temperature up. But even with all these bad conditions, again, the software is still able to pick up that return air leak. So it just gives you an idea how that, how that whole system works and what you can do with it. Uh, so when you do see this on there, start looking for return air leaks because odds are that's what you have. And uh, this should give you a good idea you know, about how that works and why we can't rely on a single return air probe across a huge duct and why we need software to actually make these types of diagnostics. Because again, it makes it a lot faster and easier. What you might have overlooked and you go, uh, you know, you might just take your probe now and move it to the other side and see that you really do have a problem that otherwise you might have missed. This is Jim with MeasureQuick. Thanks a lot for watching.